I was really inspired by the pagan YouTube pagan challenge for 2016 and one of the very first questions I think actually the first question was how did you get started on your path and this is one of the the questions that are really really interesting to me to hear about from others because as I said uh, in my introduction video I work solitary so how other people get started on this path is very uh, intriguing and so I decided I wanted to make a video of my own about that topic and tell you a little bit about how I got started on my path. Um, before I get started on that, I should probably tell you that here in Denmark, that stir, uh, ch church and state, they're not separated. And it's, it's had a sort of a, a strange effect on, on society because although quite a lot of people, about 75% is um, a member of the state church. Um, there's actually only about 2% that it goes uh, regularly to, to church on a weekly basis. So, um, and in that regard my family was very normal. Um, so they, they do belong to the state church and I was baptized at around six months and 14 years later I was to confirm my faith and I did as everybody else did and two months after that I uh, stumbled upon a book called Hexen's Honbo by Don Danny Druhul and uh, that translates to the handbook of the witch and that book was really amazing because first of all well it's a book about witchcraft that's one thing but it was a book about witchcraft in Danish by a Danish witch that lived as a witch for real and it was like mind-blowing because I've always had this uh, I don't know I used to tell my friends that when I grew up I wanted to be a witch and I um, I I always had this connection with nature. I always used spell crafts when we were playing. And when I stumbled upon this book, it was sort of uh, legitimized in some way that the games that you play when you're about 14 would evolve around witchcraft. Because at that time, well, what does boys think about you when you're going to get your first kiss and all that? Yeah, I was a late bloomer, so that came later <laughs> but uh, it all came so naturally using magic um, in that regard so we used to burn little pieces of paper as divinitions to find out who liked who and what was gonna happen next and all that um, yeah uh, I borrowed a book at the library later on called White Magic and I don't remember who wrote it but my no my mom my mom picked it up and she read it I don't think she read it cover to cover like I did but she read enough for her to get her mind at ease because she was starting to get a little bit worried that I was getting into a cult and that her little baby was going to be taken away from her this this world of witchcraft um, was so intimidating because, well, first of all, the word witch we know has quite a lot of negative connotations. But the 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 whole thing about this strange material, this occult world that I was getting dragged into, really used to upset my mom quite a lot. And when I bought my first tarot deck, that was when she uh, she needed to have a, a talk with me <laughs> and I promised her I wouldn't be sucked into a cult and that I would take it easy no weird spell crafting ish um, yeah so we found a, a level where we both could coexist in the same house um, but I went to boarding school, which is actually a very normal thing here in Denmark, I think. 
about 50% after after they graduate from the normal nine years of education. Most actually uh, go to boarding school. Well, most. 50, 50, about 50% 50 goes to boarding school after those first nine years. And I did that as well. And getting away from home and getting away from all this... Um, I don't, I don't want to call it rules, but there was definitely some negative attention about whenever I started lighting incense or burning candles or something like that. So, going to a boarding school, now that gave me a whole different set of possibilities um, and a whole new set of rules, of course, that I had to obey by. So no incense and no uh, candles and no, no such, such things. But we had internet and it was free and I could just go and Google and that's when I really stumbled upon um, Wicca and started reading up upon that. Um, and that, that really opened my mind as well. That was amazing. No one else at the entire school was witch or witchling or had any interest in the occult. It would seem it was just me, again, solitary, the little weird kid. Although, I've never had any trouble fitting in. It worked out for the better, I think. After boarding school, I actually went for a year in, uh, in Australia as, as an ex... Uh, what's that called? After the boarding school, I went to Australia as an exchange student for a year as well. Of course, a whole new set of rules again. No drinking, no driving, no sex, and no drugs. That's the rotary rules that you have to obey by. And of course, the rules in the families that you were to live with. Um, but in Australia, you have these bookshops that are stocked with wonderful books about Wicca and occult stuff, and I could just buy it. And no mother to go, hmm, what's that? That was amazing. That's when I really got into the studying. And at the age of 18, I did a self-dedication ritual to, um, yeah, to dedicate myself to the path of the witch, really. So that's how I got started. And this path has been a really winding one, as they usually are, I think. Um, when looking back, I can see there's particular points in my life where I've really jumped spiritually. And it's when I meet special people that I click with and we have some sort of... That's the dialogue again, right? When, when you connect with someone and, you, and you're able to broaden your hori horizon and and yeah, so so again, back to YouTube, that's what the meeting YouTube community has done for me. It's really broadening my horizon again. And I I used to um, I used to go to summer camps here in Denmark. We have a really wonderful pagan summer camp and I'm actually going this year. I am so excited! And it's in about a month and it's all planned out and it's just gonna be really nice to see everybody again. I know quite a lot of uh, the Danish witches in my local community um, but I haven't had the time and the energy to invest in becoming closer with these really really wonderful people and I don't really have the time yet so, but still just catching up for a few days and going to a few workshops. Yeah, it's just going to be amazing. I'm really looking forward to it. So when uh, I return to YouTube, I might have uh, some interesting footage from there. Or some stories to tell, anyway. Um, so that was pretty much it. And thank you for listening. And have a good one. Blessed be.